So the price of crude oil has fallen from over 100 bucks a barrel to about $65 a barrel or less. As you know, crude oil is a world commodity with some minor variations. People pay the same price for oil everywhere around the world. It's a case of supply and demand. There are some questions about demand, including from China, but primarily the price drop is because of supply. Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest oil country, has decided to flood the market with oil to drive out their competitors. It's good news for people who buy oil, which is every individual person in the industrialized world. The price of gas at the pump is cheaper, not just when we fill up our own cars, but anything that moves by truck or diesel train or by jet or ship. It's like modern life itself just got a bit cheaper. But Saudi Arabia isn't doing this because it loves us. It actually hates us. Saudi Arabia helped create OPEC, which stands for Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, specifically to create a cartel to rig prices, as in to rig them high. The only reason they're driving the price down now, cutting the price almost in half since the summer, is in a giant game of chicken with its competitors. It would be as if Apple decided to put Samsung and BlackBerry out of the cell phone business by selling the new fancy iPhones for just $10 each. Not because they wanted to, but because once Samsung and BlackBerry will, were killed off, then Apple could just jack up its prices to a couple thousand bucks a phone. I mean, I know that's a crazy example. We'd call that predatory pricing or dumping. There would be all sorts of taxes and tariffs that countries could put on. Shareholders at Apple would probably balk. There would be lawsuits, media outrage, etc. It wouldn't happen with cell phones, but that's exactly how it works in the international oil and gas business. That's what a cartel is. And no, you can't sue Saudi Arabia or the other 11 countries in OPEC. They're not like Apple. You can't wrestle them. They are sovereign states. And the thing is, theoretically, anyone could start up a cell phone company with enough money, but you can't just start up an oil industry. You need oil to produce. Either you've got it in the ground or you don't. And that's my point. Saudi Arabia has decided to drive down the world price of oil to wobble those few non-OPEC places where they also have oil. They are probably trying to stifle the fracking boom in the U.S., where the state of North Dakota alone produces about a, a million barrels of oil a day. They didn't do that five years ago. Uh, and, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit if they were trying to punish their rivals, the Iranians. As you know, Saudi Arabia, they are Sunni Muslims. Iranians are Shiite Muslims. They hate each other, and Iran is using its oil profits to build a nuclear bomb and the missiles to deliver them. If Saudi Arabia can cut Iran's oil revenues in half, that's probably the best thing they can do, short of getting America or Israel to bomb Iran's nuclear reactors. And again, from the perspective of most people in the world, a weaker Iran and a weaker Russia and a weaker Venezuela, um, all of which depend on oil exports for their hard currency, that's not such a bad thing. That's the backstory. But look, I, I happen to love our alternative sources of oil, the ones I call ethical oil. I'm talking about the oil sands. Did you know that more than half of all the accessible oil in the world is in Alberta's oil sands? By accessible, I mean oil that companies are allowed to drill, as opposed to oil that's owned by dictatorships like o OPEC regimes. It's basically OPEC, Russia, fracking in the U.S., and we Canadians. That's the bulk of it right there. But remember what Saudi Prince Walid bin Talal said about the oil sands and fracking in his confidential 14-page memo to the Saudi energy minister last year. Here's the key line. He said, in addition to the many discoveries of oil and gas in the U.S., Canada, and Australia, there are also great discoveries of shale gas, which will lead to a reduction of consumption of our oil. For us, the issue is clear, and it requires swift actions. Swift actions, cutting the price of oil nearly in half in just a few months, is pretty swift. But al Walid has been saying this for a long time, for years. Saudi Arabia's official policy is to keep the price of oil high enough for them to stay rich, but low enough so that other competitors like the oil sands and fracking can't get a foothold. Do you think prices will come down? Uh, uh, the state position of Saudi Arabia, we want the price to be between 70 and 80, not only to help the West, but also to help ourselves. Yes. We don't want the West to go and find alternatives. They don't want the West to go and find alternatives like the oil sands. That's what's going on. Saudi Arabia is dumping cheap oil on the market, trying to defeat its competitors, which includes Alberta. In the past week, many great Canadian companies have lost, uh, lost a lot of value on the stock market. The Toronto Stock Exchange is heavily tied to the oil sands, so that's brought the whole market down. And, of course, millions of Canadians have shares in the oil patch, either 
through their RSPs or through a mutual fund, and actually all of us do really through the Canada Pension Plans Investment Fund. So we all lost some money this past week as the oil patch stocks took a huge hit, but we all saved some money too each time we fill up at the pump, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. Now, the thing about the oil sands is those massive factories, really, that's what they are, either the massive mines or the underground production facilities called SAG-D, Steam Assisted Gravity Drainage, they're expensive to set up, billions of dollars. They're enormously capital intensive to build, and typically they need thousands of workers, skilled workers, so you don't just set them up and then stop them and when the oil price dips down and start them again. Those things work 20, 30, 40, 50 years straight through high prices and low prices. They actually work 24 hours a day. That's the only way to produce enough oil to make a rate of return on the investment. So even though oil prices are low, you're not likely to see any big layoffs from the oil sands as you might from smaller rigs elsewhere. You probably see less construction, less exploration, fewer new projects built. You'll see delays, for example, of new projects, but you won't see a lot of layoffs, I don't think. It's just my sense of how things are going. I'm not, I'm not really an expert on the business side, but all of this is a preamble for what caught my attention. I'm sorry the billions of dollars of savings have been wiped out for Canadians, not just for those who have shares in oil science companies, but everyone who has a, a Canada pension plan. I'm, I'm sorry that profits will be down, not just for those who own shares, but for all of us who benefit from the transfers and taxes from the oil patch. I'm sorry that the bully dictators at OPEC are once again playing with the West as if we are a toy for them. But all the while, I'm sort of glad for consumers and the economies of the world who have cheaper fossil fuels. But what do you make of all of this? Uh, what do you make of this video? This video, supposedly a comedy produced by the CBC, this is supposed to be a comedy. You won't know it from the humor. It really is so unfunny, it's tough to watch it all. You'll know it's supposed to be a comedy by how many times they had to add a laugh track to make it seem funny. Seriously, I counted the laugh track being used 12 times in a 90-second skit. That's how pitiful it was without the laugh track. See for yourself what I'm talking about. The falling price of oil is having a big economic impact on Canada, nowhere more so than the formerly booming province of Alberta. But the rest of Canada has a message for Albertans. Take a look. Welcome back. Your oil was your ticket out. Welcome back to the economy that you laughed about. Now the market has dropped and you're all alone. Your newfound employees are heading home. Who'd have thought they'd throw ya? Who'd have thought they'd throw ya? Back down with Manitoba. Yeah, we tease them a lot. Their job growth's not so hot. Welcome back. Welcome back. Always could spot a trend. Welcome back. But your time in the black might be at an end. Oil prices are low and still heading down. But we're right here to pick you up off the ground. You're like the prairie. You're like the prairie. Version of Blackberry. Oh, Alberta, relax. Introduce a sales tax. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Boy, that laugh track, eh? Now, the first thing to remember is that this is produced by the CBC, which sucks more than $1 billion a year from taxpayers' teats. Translation from Alberta and to a lesser extent, BC and Saskatchewan. The have provinces who have all the money because they develop oil and gas. So without oil and gas, there would be no CBC. The second thing to know is that this particular comedy show called 22 Minutes is based in Halifax, a have-not province whose provincial budget is almost 40% transfers from, you guessed it, the oil provinces. The third thing to know is that literally thousands of entrepreneurial, go get em initiative-seizing Atlantic Canadians work in the oil sands. Some have moved there permanently. Some commute back and forth. They're amongst the hardest working people in the whole country. So put it all together and what do you have? The government TV channel's government comedy show that depends on oil taxes and oil transfers is mocking Alberta. For what? For, for a moral flaw? For, for making a mistake? No, for the fact that an OPEC dictatorship is flooding the market with cheap oil to hurt us. And the government comedy show is laughing about that. 
or rather sneering about that and adding a laugh track to it. Ha, you Albertans, so glad it's over. Now you can come back to mediocrity, maybe raise your taxes. Seriously, there was a sales tax joke in there. This is government humor, the humor of bitterness and dependence and jealousy. It's that tall poppy syndrome, angry at Alberta for doing well, happy Alberta is being cut down to size, not caring. That would mean fewer transfers for them, fewer jobs for fellow Atlantic Canadians. So what? Those are small prices to pay to humble those damn Albertans, am I right? Now, I don't think the economic knowledge of these government comedians is any better than their jokes. I think oil will come back, maybe even in as short a time as a few months, maybe in a year. And I think Alberta can make money off $60 oil because Alberta is a success not because of dumb luck, but because of initiative and entrepreneurialism and risk-taking and small government. That's really what this video is about, hating those things. That comedian who introduced the segment, her name is Susan Kent. She's from Newfoundland. As I said, the show is based in Halifax. Imagine if an Ontario-based comedy TV show mocked Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada when the cod fishery failed, just, just sneered and mocked and threw a laugh track over it to pretend it was all in good fun. I mean, no offense, eh? Or hell, imagine if an Alberta-based comedy troupe did a humorous video on, I don't know, the closing of a steel mill in Hamilton, or the closing of an auto assembly line in Windsor, or the closing of the Caterpillar plant in London recently, just to name a few, mocking, derisive, sneering, jealous, schadenfreude, the Germans call it. That's unthinkable. It's just not, it's not just, un-Canadian. I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not Canadian to, to laugh at another part of the country's misfortune. We, we just don't do that in Canada. But at the CBC, they do. Say, how many layoffs this year at the CBC? I was about to say, hey, guys, don't take it the wrong way if a few oil men make a video laughing at you for all the CBC employees who are about to be laid off. But that's the thing. That <laughs>